welcome to the Christmas GCN Show. And a very Merry Christmas to all of you from all of us. Coming up this week, we review a cracking year in cycling. And then there's the GCN Awards. You have been voting in your thousands for the best performers and performances of 2017. And there's some other very important matters, such as most stylish rider and Ooh. hack forward slash bodge of 2017. And of course, we've got a few of our highs and a few of our lows from the year too. Come along, wayside. Jokes. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> That's the rib. Not hey! Oh. <laughs> Quite obvious reasons, as you'll see, most enjoy. <laughs> Got a bad rib. And the tension seeking so going up another level. <laughs> well, this is cozy, isn't it? It's great. Yeah. Lovely. Right then, this yeah. year in the world of cycling, we learned that the rise of e bikes might just be unstoppable. Sales have increased across the globe. Many manufacturers have jumped on board with new models. Yeah. And we concluded, actually, it's probably not a bad thing. We did. It's also a year for the history books as well. Lots of cycling records broken and cycling first, too. Yeah. There was Christoph Strasser's 24 hour mind and probably arse numbing indoor record. 941.873 kilometres. Oh, it's amazing. Peter Sagan's World Championship triple. Yeah. And what about Yasmin Muller's ride? 1135 miles on Zwift. That was mental. It was yeah. also the sweatiest ride of the year, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> There's been some incredible rides. I think it should crack straight on because our first award is for Achievement of the Year. Here are the nominations. Now, before we do get straight to it, we should point out that this show was actually pre-recorded before the announcement that Chris Froome had returned an adverse analytical finding for salbutamol. Of course, we can't now change the results as voted for by you, but I think it is fair to say there is now an asterisk hanging over his results. Or at, a big question mark. Yeah, or a big question mark hanging over his results at the Vuelta a España, uh, and it will be until this matter is resolved one way or another. Yeah, which could, by all conservative estimates, be pretty deep right into next year, so it could be just after the Giro, or maybe just before the Tour de France. But one way or another, like you, we're going to watch this one with interest. Riding around the world is an achievement in itself. Mark Beaumont has done it before, but this year he completed it in a ridiculous 78 days. Chris Froome racked up his fourth Tour de France win this year, but in going on to win the Vuelta for the first time, he cemented his status as one of the best Grand Tour riders of all time. 2017 saw the addition of Amstel Gold and Liège Baston Liège to La Flèche Volon in the women's spring calendar. Music to the ears of Anna van der Breggen, who won all of them, taking the Triple Crown. Phil Gill's Tour of Flanders win was truly epic, riding solo for over 50 kilometres to take the win, and that was backed up by another dominant performance at Amstel Gold. Peter Sagan's season looked headed for disaster as he failed to win a monument and then got booted out of the Tour. But he wrote himself into the history books with an unprecedented third successive world title. It's hard to get your head around really, isn't it? Running over 86,000 miles in a lifetime would seem like good going. But to do it in a single year? Truly remarkable. Right then, I think it's time for the first results. Okay, in third place, it's Chris Froome's double. In second place, it's Peter Sagan's triple. Yeah, and that means that just edging out Sagan in first place, quite rightly so, we think. Do you want a drum roll? Yes, please, mind your rib. It is Mark Beaumont. Oh, this yes. year he completed his round the world trip on a bike in just 78 days and 14 hours. That is an average of 240 miles per day, 16 hours a day in the saddle. And he had to deal with all sorts, including a broken tooth and sleep deprivation. Yeah. What about the sheer logistics around that? Yeah. Incredible. Complicated. There's so much to think about in that attempt around the world. Incredible stuff. And I think actually we should hand over to Mark himself. Hello GCN, it's uh, Mark Beaumont. Absolutely delighted to hear about the nomination with the GCN Awards. Certainly my, uh, <laughs> the biggest ride of my life, the biggest, uh, my biggest achievement as a bike rider. Hundreds and hundreds of people came out and rode with me 
And I always asked them how they knew about the ride, and I'd say nine out of ten of them had heard about it through the um, through the GCN platform, through following the journey, all the updates that you put out about it. So thanks to you guys, it's been it's been great fun sharing the adventure. I've uh, raised the bar a bit, and uh, I encourage anyone to get out there and take it on. I'm a, I'm helping three women right now train to break the women's round the world record. But uh, where are the blokes? Where are the guys? We need to get more people to step up and take on that 18,000 mile race. Thanks, GCN. Now, achieving incredible physical feats on the bike is all well and good, but that surely doesn't have to be everything, does it? No. No, definitely not. No. In fact, you would have thought enjoyment should come quite a long way up the list of priorities yeah. for most cyclists. But mm. anyway. And for some of us, though, style too. Yeah, with that in mind, we have recently reached out to GCN's unofficial heads of fashion, Tiffany Cromwell and Adam Blythe, to see who deserves to be crowned most stylish riders of 2017. Should be good. Yeah, yeah you're getting excited, Dan. Oh, yeah, they couldn't vote for themselves or for or, us. Or us, no. no that's why, yeah. This yeah. would have been a whitewash. Quite normal. Okay, so in third place in the men's is Fabio Fellini, Ooh, who nice. Adam says is just doing it correctly, always classy in a very subtle way. Just can't say fair on that. Totally no, agree with that. Nice. Yeah, and Fabio, great hair as well. Yeah, yeah. and a fine cappuccino. Indeed. Don't forget barista seals. What do you reckon? This is this is a, this is round three. No, ah, the rotation. Five. Is it the right temperature? Ah, oh, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> now, according to Tiffany, third place woman. Hannah Barnes in the iconic British Champs jersey. Nice choice. Yeah, apparently she rolled it well all year, both on and off the bike. The kit always matched, always spotless, never looked out of place. Fair play. Yeah. In second place in the men's, Adam has decided on Elio Viviani because at the World Championships, his bike and kit were on point. That's right. And I think he added he looked Euro oh, yeah. in big shouty Euro. capital letters. Yeah, big shouty <laughs> capital letters. I don't think anybody else could pull off that look, though, apart from Viviani. He's absolutely nailed it, isn't he? Viviani's yeah. bike and kit looked cool all year, because Ghent 6, his bike was cool as well. Yeah, yeah. That's true. All, Actually, we get a shout out to that. Yeah, yeah, fair enough. All right, in second place for the women's, and Tiffany's gone for Yoling Dawn. Ooh, she said uh, her kit always lines up and looks sharp but it's her style on the bike where she really stands out for Tiffany. Uh, apparently, coming from a track background, she's got that super smooth pedaling style that is beautiful to watch, and I'd be inclined to agree, actually. Uh, she looks super powerful when she sprints, and like, frankly, she's born to be on a bike. She's cannot praise argue indeed. with any of that at no, all. No, you can't. Well, I'm gonna need a little bit of a drum roll here because I've got the winner Oof. of the blokes. Oh. Okay, drum roll, please. It goes to... Danny Bernati or Daniele Bernati. Oh, all yeah. Italian players. Right, yeah, yeah, for now. Right. Now, Blythe said that Bernati has got class coming out of his ears. Well, there are worse places for it to come out. Good point. Off the bike, on the bike, his position is immaculate and spot on. He said he's never seen anything quite like it. And to cap it all, he's a great bloke, isn't he? He's lovely. Yeah, and ridiculously yeah, nice brown and tanned as well. Hello, everybody. Directly from uh, Movistar Team Presentation. Wow, it's uh, uh, an honor for me to be named like uh, the most uh, stylish rider of the year. I want to say thank you very much and uh, I want to wish you Merry Christmas and uh, Happy New Year. Ciao. And the women's peloton's most stylish rider. Goes to Lizzie Diagner. Whoa. Yeah, Whoa. that's right. Good she choice. always looks good on the bike. She, the way she attacks, it just looks so effortless, Tiffany says. Plus, her kit is always immaculate and everything matches. And she's also got a good start off the bike as well. Well deserved, well, 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 yeah. Uh, absolutely, good yeah. Good reasoning there, definitely. Yeah. On to the next category then, which is a very juicy one. Ooh. Most controversial part of the 2017 cycling oh, season. The right. things that got us talking on our bikes, debating in the cafe or arguing on social media. Mm. It's got to be one bike. Or veganism. Perhaps. No, 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 no. Oh. It's got to be sock length oh, yeah. or disc brakes. Well, that, no, there's yeah, no enough. doubt that those things will continue to rumble on and on. But the things I am talking about are things such as this. First up, Peter Sagan's disqualification from the Tour de France. Yeah. He flicked his elbow in a sprint, Mark Cavendish came crashing down, ending his race and almost ending his season. The questions we were asking there was firstly, did the elbow make contact? And secondly, did Sagan mm. do it deliberately? Yeah. Well, yeah, it's a good question. What about Pugate? Now, whether or not you should wait for a race leader when they're stopping for a poo is, if I'm honest, not a subject I ever thought that we would be debating. But, but actually, 
it defined yeah, this year's Giro d'Italia, one of the best races of the year, arguably. Uh, now, Tom de Moulin obviously stopped for a poo and then pulled out a heroic solo ride to save his race. But, frankly, should his rivals have waited? That was a good one. Mm. Uh, next up, though, we've got Lance Armstrong, sometimes known as the controversial Lance Armstrong, <laughs> in fact. Uh, it seems that his ban from cycling doesn't include talking about cycling. He did a daily podcast through the Tour de France, which some people were raving about and some people were outraged about. Mm. Yeah, Team Sky, never far from controversy, were actually accused of cheating on the very first day of this year's Tour oh, yeah, de France. With their skin suits, wasn't it? With their skin suits, that's right. It's Rival teams, mainly French, uh, accused them of having an illegal skin suit that broke the rules. Team Sky replied by saying that they had been approved by the UCI, who actually make the rules. So, um, so <laughs> perhaps not all that much controversy in the end there. There was definitely no controversy at all. I think if the teams lodging the appeal had done a little bit of homework and checked, they'd have found out that Team Sky had been using that very same skin suit for several weeks. <laughs> and then we had Australian women. I mean, they weren't controversial. I can get on to no, that in a minute. Uh, they racked up enough points between them this year after a great season of racing uh, to be able to field a full team over at the World Championships. Uh, the controversial point here was the fact that then Australian selectors only chose to take three, which meant some big names were left at home. That was until Chloe Hosking got involved hmm. and appealed. Apologies, but another small interlude right now. Uh, those of you who have been watching from the start of this video and not just scrubbed forward to this point will be well aware of the other quite seismic controversy, which has certainly cast a shadow over the last few weeks of the 2017 season. Well, you could argue the whole season, really, Dan, couldn't you? Yeah, or the whole season. Uh, Chris Froome's adverse analytical finding, where twice the legal limit of salbutamol was found as urine at the World Down Spaniard, is a late entry into controversy of the year. And given its significance and possible ramifications, over the next few months, it's going to top the list by a hefty margin. Yeah, as well as casting in doubt his Tour de France and Vuelta double, because if he's found guilty, he'll be stripped of the Vuelta title and also faces up to a two-year ban. Hmm. Anyway, on with the show. Yeah. Yeah, well, my vote goes for Sagan. That controversy was huge, and not just within the inner realms of cycling. The images, the videos, they spread over social media like wildfire. That allowed everyone to be an armchair expert, or in this case, an armchair commissaire. <laughs> no, that's true, yeah. I, I don't disagree there, but I think within cycling, I think Pugate just defined the year. I mean, first of all, we had the fast, the poor old Tom de Poulin. Fast. Yeah. Fast. fast, yeah, fast of Tom de Poulin yeah. actually having to stop for a poo mid-race. Then we had the drama of his chase to get back and save the race. And then we just had this endless debate about whether or not people should wait and respect a leader's jersey. There's flipping unwritten rules that never go away. I just, it's just going to roll on. Hang on. Yeah. Hang on. See what you did there. Yeah. I'd have to agree, though, with you, Si. I think Dumoulin's was the controversy of the year. It wiped the floor, didn't it? Yay! All the other controversies that we just talked about. And even though he followed through, he actually oh, won the Giro d'Italia. That is something that, no matter what he does for the rest of his career, we will be continuing to talk about Poogate. It'll be a stain on his career. That's uh, enough now, sorry. Incidentally, sorry. actually, you also voted in your thousands for race of the year. We're not sure whether it's coincidental or not, but you chose the Giro d'Italia. And it was yeah, a fantastically well, exciting yeah, race, wasn't it? Team. Suspenseful until the very last day with a very worthy and very likeable winner. Mm. Okay, time to get back to some performance riding because our next award, as voted for by you, is for Rider of the Year. We should start off with the women's category. The nominees are... The Triple Crown was backed up with an overall win at the Giro d'Italia and the Women's World Tour. It's been a stellar year for the Olympic champion. Ultra endurance rider and solo female entrant Sarah Hammond took her second consecutive win in a 3,000 kilometer race to the Rock in Australia. With 33 top 10s this year, it's safe to say that Annemiek van Vluten has been most consistent. She dominated La Course and took her first world title with a win in the individual time trial. What a year it's been for Corinne Rivera. The first American to win the Tour of Flanders, she then took two other one-day World Tour wins and was also a part of Team Sunweb's all-conquering Team Tantra squad at the World Championships. Sana Kant has been the dominant force in women's cyclocross for the last few seasons, but has always fallen short at the Worlds. This year, she changed that, taking her first rainbow bands in an epic race in Luxembourg.
Okay, the results are as follows. In third place, we have Sarah Hammond. Great to see her flying the ultra endurance yeah, flag up there cool. on the podium. Second place goes to Annemiek van Vluten. And that means that the 2017 GCN Female Rider of the Year is... I'm going to need a very, very big run roll. Thank you, Anna van der Breggen. And it was never really going to be in doubt at all. What an absolutely sensational season she had. Winner of the Giro, winner of the Women's Tour of California. And who can forget that amazing Ardennes triple of Flesh, Amstel and the Age, Bast on the Age. Well done, Anna. Hello, GCN watchers. I would like to thank you all for the award of Best Female Rider of 2017. It has been a great season, but this is a great way to finish it off with. So thank you and have a Merry Christmas. Do you know what she needs? Come on, Matt. Oh yeah, come on. I don't know if I can do it. What is bazooka a for you? Seasons year? worth of yeah. what is bazooka. Give me your best when you're Give it to it. I'll do it, you say it. Three, two, one. What is bazooka? bazooka? That was one of your best ever, Matt. Thanks very much. Well done with the broken rib too. Uh, okay, let's get on to the nominees in the Male Rider of the Year category. On top of his historical triple, Sagan has taken a further 11 wins this year, all but one taken at World Tour races. Questions hung over Chris Froome after he failed to take a single win before the Tour. He answered them by winning two Grand Tours in just 11 weeks. With 14 wins to his name this year, Marcel Kittel is quickly closing in on 100 career victories. Tom Dumoulin continues to improve and impress, taking some big scalps to win his first Grand Tour at the Giro then going on to win both the individual and team time trials at the World Champs. Despite having his season cut short at the start of July, Alejandro Valverde still came away with 11 wins, including his fourth Liège Baston Liège and his fifth Flesh Wollon. Right, I've been told that we are behind time, boys, one of the yeah, producers, so let's crack on with it. In third place yeah. in this category is Tom Dumoulin. In second, it's Chris Froome. There can only be one winner though, and that winner, by quite some margin, is... Scan. Oh, my word. You know what? I think it's testament to his reputation within the sport as much as anything. Because aside from winning three world titles uh, at the bounds... Aside? Well, yeah, okay. I'd not want to diminish the achievement yeah. of winning a third world title on the bounds, but actually it has been a relatively quiet year by For his him. standards. Yeah? yeah. So no classics victory. No. Nope. The Tour de France that we've kind of already mentioned. Uh, yeah. You know, it's yeah, he only had 11 wins, 10 of which were in World Tour races. By his Four standards. Yeah, I, do, I, do, I, do, I do get what you're saying, Sai, by his standards. Uh, but the fact is that in pretty much every other race that he doesn't win, he has some kind of impact. And that has got to be the definition of the what is bazooka. Should we do two then? No, we won't, won't make him do it again, but we'll award that to Peter Sagan. What could you say? Poor Peter Sagan, he's only won 11 races. Go You're on, depriving him of a what is bazooka. Come on, bring Peter Sagan, you are the worthy winner of 2017's <laughs> male What is Bazooka! <laughs> We're going to take a brief break from our awards for a few moments now as we talk through some of the riders who've drawn a line under their career in 2017. David Rebelin? <laughs> and he's actually still going, believe it or not, John, I'm right by the age of 46. I uh, know, first up, we've got Heimar Zabeldia. Uh, he decided to stop cycling a little bit earlier than Davide, uh, at 40 years of age. Also, Manuel Quinziato, he's had been an incredibly loyal domestique. Uh, he finishes not just a great career in cycling, but also a law degree under his belt too. Mm, so we'll still be in the peloton in another way, though, because he's going to be a rider, rider's agent uh, from this oh, point is, yeah. forwards. Uh, the many faces of Tommy Vock will be absent from the pro peloton in 2018, which is a big shame. And then, of course, will be no more shots fired from El Pistolero, Alberto Contador, whose last race was the Vuelta Espana, and then his final race was the Shanghai Criterium. And then he pinned on his numbers for the final time at the Saitama Criterium. Yeah. Good old Alberto. He'd have quite a few last races, yeah. Alberto. Yeah, incredible. Fair enough, though. Great career. We also had Andrew Talansky. He has finished competitive cycling, but he's going over to the dark side. Triathlon. I know. He's doing triathlon. What's he going to do with his socks? 
mean, yeah. he must have so many cycling socks, but he's not going to be allowed to wear them anymore. eBay, Stop. eBay, probably. Yeah, okay. eBay. Keep your eyes peeled for yeah. some bargain uh, Cannondale socks. Yeah. 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 And then an extra special mention for the classics legend that is Tom Bone. He attempts yeah. to win Paris Bay for a fifth time. Came out slightly short, uh, but he hung up his wheels after that. It is now time for hack forward slash bodge <laughs> of the year. <laughs> it is one of our highlights of the week. Every week, yeah. sifting through the amazing hacks and bodges that you send in on social media using the hashtag GCNHack. And so we thought we would line up some of our very favourites from the year. Yeah, starting off with this absolute perler from pro rider Luis Limus, which is the solar powered bike. Uh, this is Check cracking. That is absolutely yeah, genius, nuts, isn't it? it? What an amazing idea. That's an e-bike of the future right Definitely. there. And then we have got the pigeon saddle, or that could be the cobra <laughs> saddle that Matt and Sai thought looked like a pigeon. Pigeon yeah. saddle would be a good idea though, I reckon. Yeah, you know it would. Definitely. Yeah. And it does cooler. look like a pigeon. What would be cooler? Yeah, we definitely thought it was a pigeon. What cooler. Again, boys? Cooler. 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 A pigeon saddle. Cooler. It's actually a cobra. Oh, I'm not late now. Yeah, yeah, it was okay. Yeah. And what about Tim Loveday's BMC Angle Poise Lamp? <laughs> One of the most expensive hacks we've probably seen, but very cool and classy around the house. That's mm. right, that's some classy homeware. Uh, and then this one from Drew Wilson over on Instagram. Certainly got our attention. It. Otherwise known uh, on Instagram as Cyclo Carbon. This bike is called the Fat Quinox. That's cool. You know what, oh, looking at that, that I cool. wonder whether that is actually the inspiration of the 3T Strada. Check it out, it's got one by. Hasn't it? It's got uh, clearance for wider tyres, mega aero. I think Vrooman has been watching we, this. Yeah, yeah I think maybe actually he's, you know, Maybe the 3T Strider is infringing some Actually. patterns there. Oh, well, there we go. Yeah, watch out. But what about this absolute cracker from Son of Sam? One of my firm favourites of the year, without a shadow of a doubt. But it did cause a lot of debate in the comments yeah. section. What exactly was it for? Yeah, well, it turns out the Canadians know, didn't they? It's not a lawnmower nope. with a slug killer attached. Nope. It's actually a <laughs> snowplow, ice mulcher, and gritter all rolled into Jeez. one. And indeed, some people were moved to say it wasn't just a hack, it was actually a must and essential yeah. for any snowbound cyclist yeah. with an eco conscience. I'm surprised that hasn't been patented, to be perfectly honest with you. Well, someone was off to the patent office. Oh, wow. Yeah, they said in oh, the yeah. comments. Yeah, yeah. So it was actually, like a race. We do learn quite a lot through hacks and bodges. We do. Yeah, initially we do, yeah. deeming them a bodge and later turning out. They are an actual yeah. invention. We also uh, learn a lot about snow from Canadians yeah. as well. It turns <laughs> yeah. out we don't know very much. As ever though, there can only be one winner of a category and without a doubt, it had to be Simon Morrill's DeLorean. Oh, right. Featured yeah, recently yeah. on the channel. This is not just a hack or a bodge. It is multiple hacks. If you haven't seen that video, make sure that you do check it out. But that bike is something to behold. Can it travel through time though? I probably could. That is, that is a that's hack. That's the next add-on. Right. Enough about everyone else, what about us? Yeah. <laughs> GCN. Uh, it's been an incredible year, 2017, yeah. with a few highs. <laughs> and a few lows. Oh, oh no! Oh, he's got it! He's got it on camera. and a few downs. Due to the fact that the East Japan Railway Company now has specific cycling related train journeys at the weekend. <laughs> <laughs> specific cycling related train journeys. <laughs> What's the, what is it again? Announced new specific routes. <laughs> it's like new specific. Cycling, cycling specific, specific trains. trains. Sorry, it's gonna be a long day. New cycling. We learnt that Japan now definitely goes on the list as a cycling paradise after the East Japan <laughs> Railway Company announced cycling specific weekend routes which will take 99 cyclists Trains. For oh, f**k's sakes. <laughs> but he has announced new cycling specific trains. Ah yep. oh, f**k me. That was it. I know. <laughs> this weekend in... <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Uh, in all serious notes, there's no <laughs> shit. What a <laughs> day. <laughs> shit. Right. Uh, uh, but overall, an exceptional year in 2017. As ever, an enormous privilege to be able to travel the world to visit some of the best events and some of the biggest bike races. What's been your highlights, Si? Well, I think we've got to say, uh, actually getting out and meeting so many of you, or yeah, your lovely viewers, is, uh, is always a highlight. But uh, in terms of what we've shot, um, I think making a bike frame 
uh, was an absolute highlight. That's one to tick off my bucket list. Riding it has been very enjoyable. Yeah, you do indeed. actually ride it, don't I you? I do, yeah. Uh, but also, uh, I think I've got to say that perhaps the biggest thing was getting to ride with Mark Beaumont, joining him on the first day of his Round the World trip. That was you, brilliantly enjoyable. You didn't look like you enjoyed it that much. <laughs> All right, no, fair enough. I did enjoy it. Uh, it was an absolute privilege. I was quite surprised we even got invited in the first place. Uh, but then, actually, I'd never ridden anywhere close to that distance before. And so being able to do that, tick that off, alongside him was pretty special. Yeah. Well I, for quite obvious reasons, most enjoyed filming the Tour of Flanders preview show. <laughs> I think we all did. Yeah. Yeah. That waffle was really good, wasn't it? It was yeah. nice. I think we're going to be back here for how long is it to Just walk watch. here? Quite a long walk. No, Away. like 15 minutes. And then... Well this yeah. is the sort of thing I wanted to open. <laughs> 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 oh my god! Uh, in all seriousness, though, I did absolutely love going over to Zambia to see how the buffalo bikes are used. That is an experience I will never, ever forget. But in terms of the video I most enjoyed watching, I wasn't even involved in it. I really enjoyed watching you and Matt go up the Taiwan KOM Challenge. That was fantastic. Was that because like, you suffered so much? Almost want to do it next year. That oh, that's not that much. Well, then. we could get you signed up pretty early if you fancy it, Dan. But no, that was an amazing, yeah, that was it an amazing was, experience. Yeah. It hurt so much that we actually cried, didn't we? We did. You didn't see that in the film, but we, we had, were basically just we had, sobbing. We had a little moment at the top yeah, of the hill, did, didn't yeah. we? <laughs> anyway, I think my favourite video, aside from that one, was Cheap bike versus super bike. Yeah. But I had a lot of fun doing the 10 second bike sketches with the pros. Oh, yeah. Now we've kept one back, which is particularly special, and it's from Walt Poles. And you know it's special when you watch this. We're here with Walt Poles about to embark on his first ever 10 second bike sketch. You have 10 seconds, which starts in three, two, one, go. He's gone for two wheels straight off, the frame's already in there. Slight hesitation. We've got handlebars in, very strange geometry on this frame. Single crank, it's, that's, there's no no seat, no chair, uh, there's no there's no chain, but it's, yeah, is it like an aero bike perhaps? Yeah, I think so. Let's have a close look at that. Could just a signature across the bottom, please. Yeah, I don't know if I can do that. He's gonna put his name to <laughs> Well, let's have a quick, quick look there. 10 second. Bike sketch. That's, why That's it. <laughs> okay, well, my favourite is actually a toss up between two videos How to Ride and Look Like a Belgian Pro, absolutely fantastic, and the top tech that the pro should be using. I think it's fair to say at one point we've all wanted to be a Belgian pro the yeah. style, the look, the grimaces, everything. But the top tech wins. Just the thought of seeing those riders going around with belay glasses on, causing havoc, <laughs> mayhem. Hilarity. Some yeah. of the acting in that video was absolutely top yeah, hole. We took scale, it to another it? level, didn't we? <laughs> His ankles are looking big though, look. Your, your ankles are looking thick on the altitude as well. My ankles? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I tell you what, John, my favourite of yours, mate, is definitely uh, how to wax a chain. My bike is still going strong, chain is untouched, bike is utterly filthy, drivetrain is immaculate, so you can wax my chain anytime you like. I'm to try that. Nice. What about you, Nasty? Well, my absolute favourite, Dan, has to be um, Matt and Cy, our e-bike spun. Just yeah. purely oh, cool. because Thanks, it looked really fun to spend a few hours dropping Cy, and I think we <laughs> yes, can all agree yeah, that the only really. chance we have to do it is if we're on an e-bike. How did you feel at the end of that Cy. ride, Matt? I was as fresh as a daisy. <laughs> Cy, I was absolutely Cy. ruined because I hadn't been able to eat strudel because basically I'd been dropped so badly. Every time I got to a cafe, Matt was ready to go. Yeah. E-bikes, I, I can confirm, are fun. Yeah, and they help you eat more cake. They do. Uh, whilst we're at it, actually, we should say a few thank yous as well. Firstly, to the people behind the scenes at GCN. Uh, some of you, of course, will know John Chocolate Voice Bevan. He did the oat root this year. What a cracking video that, that is. Uh, yeah, but brutal. there are a whole other team behind the camera without whom, of course, we couldn't be doing this. Uh, likewise, we couldn't be doing this without you, the viewers. A big thank you to all of you, and in particular, some of the regular commenters, Michael McDermott, Swedish House Fifa, Niels Heldens, uh, Pietro Mastier. The rest of you, you know who you are. A huge Huge thank you from all of us here at GCN. Uh, now, whilst we've had a lot to celebrate through 2017, unfortunately, there's been a fair amount of sadness as well, as we've had to say goodbye to quite a few friends.
or absent friends? Absent, absent friends. friends. Absent friends. Uh, right, before we finish, let's lift the mood back up slightly. Uh, what about targets for 2018, Si? Oh man, uh, I'm not sure about specific targets. There's places I definitely want to go and ride my bike. Colombia, I'm desperate to go to. Japan, I'm desperate to go to. Hopefully either one of those, or both, could happen in 2018. Tom? Uh, I would like to do an event in Namibia called the Desert Dash. At the end of the <laughs> nice. oh, Very cool. Nice. Yeah. John? Cool. Uh, I'm going to put my head on the line. Paris Roubaix Sportif. So the long one, all those cobble sections. Nice. Yeah, that's I smash myself one. up. I'd like to ride in the Arctic or in Iceland on a fat bike in the snow. Oh my goodness. <laughs> yes. Yeah, a bit I'll left just, field, man. Yeah, or I'll just, just take I'll just it one step to, further. Well, I, I, think, I think it'd just be fantastic. Uh, yeah, I too would yeah. like to visit yeah. some new places. We've got a lot of viewers in the Philippines and the pictures they send in look oh, absolutely yeah. stunning. Uh, I also want to go and do an event in Pittsburgh. We'll reveal that next year. Mm, I'm intrigued. Interesting, yeah. yeah. Make sure you guys let us know what you thought your highlights were in 2017 and indeed what your targets are for 2018. I'm sure you know what to do by now. Let us know in the comments section. That's right, down below. Yeah, and we'd also like to express our heartfelt thanks to you, the GCN crew, because you make all this happen. And certainly this year, well, it wouldn't have been much fun without you. Yeah, thank Today, you. So and thanks cheers. so much. Cheers. Uh, right, you know the drill. If you haven't subscribed, click on the globe. And if you've got some friends that haven't, tell them to watch the video and click on the globe at the end. Uh, if you've enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up down below. If you've enjoyed the year, surely yeah, give it a thumbs up. Yeah, give it a thumbs, yeah, up. thumbs up generally. Uh, a yeah. couple more videos to watch now, because it's not just people and riders that get awards, but also bikes and tech. Mm. So you can find the tech awards just down here, or you can find the GCN World Tour of Bikes, the most successful bikes in the World Tour this year, just down here. Well, it's on bikes. Well.